Hello there. My name is Paul Campbell, and I'm going to continue to read You Know Something Is Wrong When, an American Affidavit of Probable Cause. Today, we will, we will be going over part 11, going forward. The Indian answer. What to do when they have the guns and clubs? Make them look bad. Promote the golden rule. Promote the, the golden rule. Love, peace, prosperity, liberty, happiness. Mahatma Gandhi. Show their violent and dishonorable and criminal nature to the world. Then let the world take care of the problem and clean your, your own house. <clears throat> the principle of non-aggression, non-violent protests and objection, labor strikes and work stoppages, boycotts of products, payments and manufacturers, peaceful demonstrations, marches, occupations, and educational e efforts, refusal to obey illegal li licensing, registration, taxation and control, refusal, refusal to enforce unlawful orders, refusal to operate outside lawful jurisdiction, oper operation of lawful county governments, operation of lawful state governments, operation of lawful grand juries, courts and enforcement agencies, including citizens arrest. Those are nine, nine. The Icelandic answer. The tiny country of Iceland found itself in a similar crux. Their answer, arrest the bankers responsible, issue new national currency and go on. It was just that simple and the rest of, of the world both understood and applauded their actions. The power of no. Many people have the understandable impulse to go out and express rage over what ha has been done to them and in their names, but any violence only plays into the hands of those guilty of these crimes. They have the guns and the tanks and the tasers and the clubs. They also presume to have the moral authority and responsibility to stop rebellion and instruction. Moreover, they get paid at, out of your pockets for doing so. We must literally be gentle as dove and wise as serpents. Remember that these Babylonian usurpers worship duality, for their process to work there has to be a black and a white, a Republican and a Democrat, a Christian and a Muslim, a pillar and a post. Without duality, they can't function and their entire system grinds to a halt. Without duality in mirror images and semantic deceit, they can no longer confuse the issues and the people. They can't divide and conquer. The correct and only strategy that works against them is precisely that employed not so long ago by Gandhi. Nonviolent non-cooperation. They say you have to pay income taxes. No, you don't. They say that you have to pay a driver's license to travel from point to point. No, you don't. They say you have to buy health insurance from them. No, you don't. They say you have, have to know, obey, and pay for enforcing 80 million laws. No, you don't. They say you have to register your private property, including your children, no, you don't. They didn't create you. They don't own you. You are not their employee. By what authority do they address you and demand you and demand that you do anything at all? So long as you are not harming anyone or damaging property, they have no right to even speak to you unless spoken to. When did you knowingly, willingly, and under conditions of full disclosure, sign and any contract subjecting you, your will to theirs. When and where did you give them consent to charge their debts to your account? <clears throat> Ask them, drag them out into the open air and make them show you the contract obligating you. If they say the constitution, ask which constitution, which state. Ask them to show you your signature on the document in question. 
Be tough-minded, polite, and determined, remembering always that most of the people involved in it implementing this system have no idea what that they are doing anything wrong. Show them mercy in their ignorance and educate them. Help them understand to the extent possible. In this way, we dismantle and undermine the system of duality from the, un from the ground up. When we stop thinking in terms of us versus them, and black versus white, and Republican versus Democrat, and Christian versus Muslim, and American versus Iranian. We deprive the criminals among us of their power to manipulate and control and feed upon us all. Oh. We must recognize that there is one human family, one planet, one sea, one global jurisdiction of the air, and that all true law among all men can be reduced down to three simple pre presets. Presets. Keep the peace. Love one, keep the peace. Two, love others as you would be loved. Three, do no harm. By honoring these simple natural laws, we put an end to the endless conflict and criminality. We protect ourselves and everyone else from being used as instruments of evil. We end the system of duality and enslavement without firing a shot. Number one national security risk, ignorance. That's right. Our most urgent security concern is our own ignorance. That is what makes us vulnerable and a prey to monsters, except for ignorance. Not one of the deceits exposed here would last as long as a snowball in the sun. The perpetrators wouldn't even try to foist off their ploys. We know better, so they know better, and we could all get on with doing our jobs in life. So why are we ignorant? Cause one, public schools operated outside local control to paraphrase Malcolm X, only a fool lets his enemies educate his children. While the fe federal government is not supposed to be our enemy, it is a foreign entity with its own axis to grind. The current state of ignorance about our government, treaties, laws, and history is a result of federal state franchises taking over education. And more and more federal encroachment into the education process. The result has been inexorable, dumbing down or the American people so as to more readily manip manipulate and control and defraud us. Pause two. Over the last two decades, thousands of American news media outlets have been bought up and placed under new management with the result that only six corporations and 272 executives control 90% of the media, television, radio, and newspapers. This leads to monopoly conditions in the, in the marketplace and the boring sameness that we, we all, that we are all too familiar with. Worse, all six of these major media corporations are foreign owned. As above, only a fool lets his media resources be owned and operated by foreigners. The number, the number two national security risk Mercenary armies disguised as government agencies. Over the course of, of the Obama administration, there has been a, an insane buildup and in stockpiling of arms on American soil by federal agencies. As you now know, these agencies are only service providers, corporate subcontractors, not legitimate public agencies at all. And buying billions with a B, uh, rounds of ammunition for agency, 
for these agencies, including BATF, IRS, FEMA, FBI, NSA, DHS, and a general pro proliferation in the number of agencies, the Obama administration has been in, in effect creating commercial mercenary armies and are missed. Mits, federal, federal employees are not allowed to have the free run of the land jurisdiction, and they are certainly not allowed to be armed and swaggering around and paramilitary style and paramilitary style. This includes state and local police forces, which are in fact all employed under the corporate umbrella. The only federal agents allowed free egress on state soil are the United States Marshals. And only when they are shown, sworn to uphold the Constitution for the United States of America and in pursuit of their duty to protect the United States male period. The number three, the number three national security risk. Bar associations run as criminal cartels. Instead of functioning as they should to promote and enforce high professional and ethical standards, bar association has forced their members to commit personage and barratry against the American people and have used these means to plunder both public and private assets. We have held these private institutions in ill-deserved esteem and have misplaced the public trust in them to operate according to the treaties and charters which allow them to exist on our shores. Clearly, they have operated as cr criminal syndicates and deserve to be permanently outlawed. About your rulership. There seems to be a need for new answers, even if these new answers are very old answers. The Bible and the Hindu Vedas and American Indian wisdom tradition all tell us that it is our purpose in life, life wait, is to find truth and take care of the planet. Should it surprise us that when we do other things, we are unhappy and alienated and unfulfilled. In our heart of hearts, we know what we should be doing and how we should be living and aren't. We need to change we need to change that. We cannot own land. We come from the land and we return to it. All pretensions otherwise, whether individual or corporate, are merely lies. At most we have the right to enjoy the fruits of our own labors. And those homes and other improvements we make for ourselves and our heirs. In the same way, we cannot claim to be better than any, anyone else on account of strength or wealth or, relig or religion or creed or color or sex or age or beauty or occupation. There are many flowers in the garden. Who is to say that the king is any better or any happier than his housekeeper? That the work of the man who cleans the toilets is any less important than that of an astronaut. Then, two, who knows the my mystery of our individual souls? Each one of us has our hand tailored blessings and our individual grief and our own lessons to learn. The sooner we learn to recognize our own blessings and stop chasing after or stealing or simply retaining through ignorance, those blessings that belong to others, the happier we, we will be and the happier our planet will be. If something isn't yours, give it away. Set it free because only then will your hands be free to grasp the blessings that are yours and which will give you lasting joy. 
If you don't use a tool, give it to someone who will. Those jewels you hoarded away in a dark box. What good are they? And what joy can they bring if they never see the light of day? The song in your heart that you stifle because you think it is not good enough, sing it anyway. Artists are like songbirds. If you have it left in you to see the beauty or ears left to hear the song, then you are not dead and never will be. Open your eyes. Look around. Take a deep breath. Who is in control of your world if you're not? When you see the orphans or the homeless animals or the ruined farm fields, it's not somebody else's problem. It's yours. When you see criminals preying upon the helpless and the innocent, it's not someone else's responsibility to stop them. It's yours. Don't ever think that you can't do whatever you need to do to change your own life or to change the world. Each one of you are literally kings and queens. It's only because you have abdicated your own throne that the world is the sorry, disjointed, unfair, and ugly place that it is. It is up to you to make other choices and dream other dreams. A crown for every occasion. Just in case, case you have any doubts, here's what the Supreme Court says about your sovereignty. First Amendment rights are indeed fundamental for we the people are, wait, for we the people are the sovereigns, not those who sit in the seats of the mighty. Sovereigns are equal. It is the duty of a sovereign not to submit his rights to the decision of a co-sovereign. He is the sole arbiter to his own rights. He acknowledges no superior but God alone. To his equal, he shows respect, but not submission. Sovereignty is, itself is, of course, not subject to law. for It is the author and source of law. But in our system, while sovereign powers are delegated to the agencies of government, sovereignty itself remains with the people by whom and for whom all governments exist and acts. We acknowledge that the immunity of a truly independent sovereign from suit in its own courts have been enjoyed as a matter of absolute right for centuries. Only the sovereign's own consent could qualify the ability, oh wait, the absolute character of that immunity. I bid that the notion that immunity from suit is an attribute of sovereignty is reflected in our cases. I'd at 415 and that this explanation adequately supports the conclusion that no sovereign may be sued in its own courts without its consent. Chief Justice Jay took a less vehement tone in his opinion, but he too denied the applicability of the doctrine of sovereign immunity to the states. He explained the doctrine as an incident of European feudalism and said that by contrast, no such ideas obtain here. At the revolution, the sovereignty devolved on the people and they are truly the sovereigns of the country, but they are sovereigns without subjects unless the African slaves among us may be so called and have not, none to govern by themselves, the citizens of America are equal as fellow citizens and as joint tenants in the sovereignty. <clears throat> so you are sovereign and the Supreme Court agrees, but just be aware, you can't be sovereign and a citizen at the same time. 
The term sovereign citizen is an oxymoron. Those who use this label are either ignorant or insulting, and you are neither one. Rules of rulership. One, you control what you consume. You don't have to ingest garbage media presentations of any kind, including the evening news. You don't have to eat bad food, drink fluoridated water, take drugs just because they are prescribed by a man in a white coat, buy a new car because a, a car company thinks it is time to upgrade, drink alcohol, smoke, or do anything else that profits something or someone else at your expense. You control what you believe. You have two eyes, two ears, a brain, and a built-in Shinola sensor. If your government, church, mosque, synagogue, gang, or club, or any kind preaches violence, practices deceit, promotes slavery, or otherwise violates common sense and decency, it is time to vote with your feet and stop empowering that group. You control how you react. You can't always control circumstance around you, and you can never control what some other individual thinks, does, or feels. But you are always in absolute control of how you react. You don't have to allow manipulation or your emotions or your responses. You can step back and choose how you are going to in interpret your reality. Four, you control your focus. You choose who and what you give your attention to. Governments and news media are constantly trying to scare you and browbeat you into buying whatever they are selling. However, you have the ability to turn them off and focus on what matters to you. By choosing positive things to focus on and by focusing on things that you control directly, like eating nutritious food, brushing your teeth, reading a good book, like we're doing now, growing a garden, playing a musical instrument, taking a walk in the park, you increase your joy in life and gain a better understanding of your ability to rule yourself and your world. You control what you value. You have the ability to discern what really matters to you and what doesn't. Do you give a rat's butt who wins the Grammy Awards this year? Really? It's okay either way. We are all different. Just realize that you have the, con the conscious ability to determine what matters to you and the equal ability to act accordingly. Six, you control what you accept. You don't have to say yes to anything, ever. The, word, the world offers you all sorts of deals, good and bad. It's up to you to decide what you will accept and what you will reject. The more self-respect and self-knowledge you do or possesses, the better. Seven, you control what you cherish for the future. This is part of what you, you value, of course, but on a larger scale, it's up to you to envision what kind of wor world you want to pass on to your children and take the steps to make sure that, that that is the kind of world you pass on. The words of and for. About now, there are a bunch of people feeling like their heads are going to explode. There are those staggering around with both hands over their ears in a tragic state of denial. And there are those who are nodding with a knowing, disgusted look. There are predictable stages of waking up. The first stage involves retraining, retraining your mind to realize with certainty that those people in Washington, D.C., who you elected in good faith to fill public offices 
as deputies representing your state don't represent your state on the land and most certainly don't represent you. They are corporate officers of a commercial corporation under contract to provide governmental services. They have the same limitations and motivations as any other corporate executives. The fact that they do precious little that is good for you has probably reared its ugly head many times before. But now you, you know for sure that it is literal and true. They are in Washington, D.C. to serve themselves, not the public. They are participating in a foreign government in a foreign jurisdiction, and that is all there is to it. They aren't your Congress, and within your lifetime, they never were. It is all smoke, mirrors, and fraud. Baloney, Shinola, calling an orange a kumquat doesn't change a thing in actual fact. If you vote for them in any of their corporate elections, you contractually hand over your authority to them to exercise it as they please without accountability to you. You also give them another excuse to claim that you are a citizen of the federal United States instead of the con continental United States and therefore subject to them and chattel belonging to their, their corporation, obligated to pay whatever debts they obligate you to pay, without question, no less. We've been dumped down so long, we don't even know what our real flag looks like. But now you do. The civil peacetime flag of the United States. The continental United States are at peace and you should be flying this flag instead of the stars and stripes if you are a state citizen. It's this flag you should be flying. This flag right here. For the next few weeks, months, maybe up to a year, you will be struggling to overcome assumptions left over from years of indoctrination. America is still beautiful but run down and weak as a result of corporate cor corruption and criminality on the part of the banks and the lawyers in Congress. You will keep being tempted to get involved in political parties and voting rituals that are mean meaninglessly waste, wastes of time and money. You will keep turning around, turning toward Washington, D.C., hoping to hear better news. When you should be turning toward Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where your actual capital is still located. You will catch yourself thinking that the stars and stripes is your flag, when in fact the civil flag with vertical stripes and blue stars on a white ground is yours. It's not, the co it's not the Coast Guard flag, as some have argued. The Coast Guard started out as a civil maritime force to prevent exactly the kind of inland piracy we have suffered. That's why the Coast Guard took the civil flag instead of the stars and stripes as the basis of its service flag. The, lap the rats will try to keep you from using your flag because it keeps them from usurping your jurisdiction. They will tell you that the civil flag is a patriot myth and that the land jurisdiction of the continental United States doesn't have its own flag with vertical stripes. They can argue with, Net with Nathaniel Hawthorne, 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 who described the civil flag of the continental United States in at, in at a time before all this self-serving British bunco began. After you start flying the correct flag and, retrain, and retraining your entire thinking process and all the assumptions you've been fed about how the world is supposed to work you need to recognize your country on the land, beginning at, at the township level, 
and then the county, and then the state. You don't live in a in any county of or state of anything. You live in Jackson County or Ma Macon County or Clark County. You live in the Alaska state or the Illinois state or the Colorado state. Anytime you see the word word of of it refers to an incorporated state of state, a franchise of some corporate entity, and that automatically means that it is functioning in the international jurisdiction of the sea, not on the land. You can't make a blueberry pie out of lemons, and you can't act in behalf of the people of the continental United States while occupying a private corporate office and a governmental services corporation franchise, merely calling itself the state of something. Likewise, when you see the word for, you know that whatever entity or document is being presented, it is being presented in behalf of some other entity or entities. Even the Constitution for the United States of America is a document being presented literally for the United States of America that is, for those states signing it, it would not apply to any state that refused to sign it. When you see a name like the Superior Court for the state of Arkansas, you immediately know you immediately know that one, it is a corp corporation, and two, it is it is acting in behalf of another corporation doing business as the state of Arkansas. How do you know this? The use of the word for and the capitalization of the title. Crimes against humanity. All the issues discussed by this affidavit are crimes against humanity by criminal corporate organizations. Everything from identity theft to securities, securities fraud, to bogus mortgages, foreclosures, and evictions, it is all crime against humanity. Ironically, this, is, this has been enforced and allowed by those most obligated to protect us. The Department of Defense, America, America the Department of Defense. America has been run under the Lieber Code, Geneva Conventions, and Hague Conventions since the Civil War. DOD and its predecessors have had their paws on the helm, helm of our ship of state throughout and have failed their duty to us and to our soldiers and our veterans too. The crimes of the century. You might, you might think that the vast white collar crime perpetuated against the Americans Brits, Canadians, Australians, and Europeans count as the crime of the, of the century. But fraud and, and coercion, extortion, and even imprisonment and murder of individuals pales when compared to the crimes perpetuated by recent presidents, most notably George W. Bush and potentially Barack Obama. Under Bush's auspices, we suffered an obvious false flag attack against the World Trade Center and, and the murder of thousands of innocent Americans and people from around the world who happened to be present on September 11, 2001. But that is still not the crime of the century. The crime of the century is the, delib is the deliberate pollution of Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, and large portions of North Africa with American nuclear waste. The perpetrators took what they called spent nuclear waste materials from storage and underground salt mines in the western United States and packed it into a artillery shell castings which they exploded all over the Middle East and North, Af and, and North Africa. George W. Bush, Richard Cheney, and Harry Reid 
are fundamentally responsible for pollution that will may that will maim and kill innocent people in these countries for the next 60,000 years. Unless we find means to neutralize and or, and or recapture this radioactive waste, 2,400 future generations of, of innocent human beings will suffer <clears throat> birth defects, organ failures, radiation sickness, and death because these monsters lack both brains and hearts. Almost as an afterthought, at least 100,000, yeah, 100,000 American soldiers and their families are suffering the same fate and being lied to by the Veterans Administration and told that their obvious symptoms, children born as cy cyclops with missing organs without teeth, loss of their own teeth and hair, bizarre cancers, loss of short-term short -term memory, hormonal imbalances, weird blood calculations, diseases, skin rashes, and lesions that won't go away, etc., 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 is in no way service-related. Sorry, folks, we did, we did the damage, but we won't admit it, and we won't pay for your medical care or that of your fa family members. And that was a quote. Just like Agent Orange, just like mustard gas, just like the Spanish influenza, just like so many, many other outrages committed by our gov government and its allies against our sons and daughters who have been left adrift, maimed, miserable, and sick after being lied to by these vermin and in good faith doing what they believe to be their duty in defense of their country. To add insult to injury, the perpetrators buy million dollar life insurance policies on every American, Canadian, Aussie, German, Japanese, with or tax money so that when we die, they profit. How much is a life worth? When will we stop destroying what we can never repair or rebuild? When will the government corporations responsible, including the United Nations Incorporated, doing business as the IMF, doing business as the United States Incorporated, and its buddies in the Federal Reserve doing business as the United States of America Incorporated, be forced to try to compensate the people they have harmed, the soldiers they have betrayed, the widows and children left behind, the innocent civilians murdered and maimed. All these government corporations with very few expectations have taken part in war for profit schemes and they have all functioned as criminal syndicates. syndicates. Almost all of them deserve immediate liquidation, and only those that confess and redeem themselves merit, merit reconsideration. This is the crux of the matter presented to Pope Benedict XVI in 2009, and, and it remains the crux of the matter before Pope Francis today. The reason we have war in our midst is that it is extremely profitable for some people and some governments. The only way to get rid of it is to make it unprofitable for them. As remedy for war and the means of ending motivations for war.
we suggest that a mammoth tax be levied against any nation that provokes, promotes, supplies, or participates in war or armed conflicts of any kind to be enforced by all the other nations of the world and made payable to a, a victim's restitution fund that must be paid out paid out directly to, directly to the other nations harmed and to the individual victims of any such conflict. The remedy is simple, straightforward, and could be implemented tomorrow by the United Na Nations Security Council. If the members of, of that body were not the perpetrators of these wrongs, as the circumstances make, makes, it, makes clear, the United Nations is part of the problem, not the solution. The United Nations is the same problem on a different scale. The solution must come from outside the box. It must arise from the thinking, living, breathing, willing people of the world. People who will change their way of thinking and their way of life and teach others to do the same. The last big lie. Representative gov government itself, wait, represent, representative, representative government isn't really possible. Nobody can ever represent you because you are far too unique and changeable. Changeable. Your feelings, in, interests, and opinions change almost daily, and certainly via the passage of time, their material interests shift as well. Absent a continuous stream of communication, detailing your exact needs and wishes, no deputy can honestly and reliably act as your agent in any state legislator, nor in Congress, nor in Parliament. At best, some of those elected make a good make a good faith effort to represent the needs of the, and best interests of the people who elected them. Most of those pretending to represent their states and their con constitu constitu constituents couldn't give a fig about either one. As a result of being both materially impossible and unenforceably, un, unenforceable as a practical matter, representative government doesn't work and it never has worked. It's another obvious fraud scheme devised as a means to give people the illusion of power while in fact buying them off so that only a few individuals exercise any control and they can then be bought off in turn. That is precisely what has happened throughout the history of the representative government. And it is a large part of the problem we are facing today. Shining a search searchlight on the cockroaches in Congress may serve the Halcyon purpose of deterring them from doing evil, but very little can be invoked to encourage them to do good. Even among those who earnestly wish to do what is right, there are severe limitations in terms of ability, education, and intellect that mod moderate against the accomplishments of many obvious and extremely desirable goals. For example, Ron Paul has stood virtually alone in calling for an end to the whole Federal Reserve system, which should be as obvious as calling for the ouster of a fox from a hen house. Notice that half the remaining members of Congress were in on the supply of readily available chicken thighs and breast meat, while the other half lacked the gumption, cur the gumption courage and intelligence to stand with Dr. Paul. This is representative government in action. It doesn't work in reality because it is never possible to recruit people 
with the, re the requisite mindset, purity, and dedication. Instead, any nexus of power relentlessly attracts idiots and psychopaths bent on self-aggrandizement and petty self-interest. As it stands, the warmongers, the arms dealers, the professionals at the misnamed Department of Defense, and all the industrialists and subcontractors who supply support materials and technical expertise lobby the, lobby the members of Congress relentlessly and spend the big bucks on campaign contributions to make sure that their representatives in Congress remain like fixed stars on Capitol Hill, while those who strive to represent all the little people back home are sent home with tin, tin hats as souvenirs for their efforts. This too is representative government in action. It's not bad enough that these elected officials can't actually and reliably represent you. Huge organizations are buying them off to represent their interests instead. Often in diametric opposition to what is good for anyone else on earth, on top of all this, less than 30% on average of the populace is involved in any aspect of defining or electing or directing the government at any level. How representative is a system in which 70% or more of the people are not even participating? So not only is our, our system a government of government badly broken by fraud, deceit, and ignorance, any fix will be both temporary and inadequate to resolve the actual problem, which is representative government itself. Assuming that a lawful and functioning government of the people, by the people, and for the people can be reestablished, how do we address this fundamental law flaw? We can outlaw lobbyists acting in behalf of organizations. We can set term limits. We can make war unprofitable. We can present ourselves as ourselves and weigh in as participants in our own government to a far greater extent. Beyond that, new technology makes it possible for us to make direct decisions impacting us and those we love. We could, for example, directly vote on whether or not to declare war, what percentage of the budget to spend on defense, and how much foreign aid to expand, to expend. We could, ho we could hold a once a year national referendum, setting the basic framework for government spending and imposing our priorities upon our servants, instead of letting them run rampant with our credit cards at the behest of lobbyists. By presenting ourselves, we can put an end to the farce and fraud of being represented and stop being helplessly dependent upon others to be honest and conscientious about their duty to us. <laughs> Going forward, to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. Inspector Morse. We are at the end of a dark and desperate and dishonest time in America. What we make of it from here is, our, is ours to say. The Civil War, the First World War, the Second World War, and all the other wars for profit that have been heaped on our weary heads and through our gullibility visited upon the other nations of the world at the behest of bankers, lawyers, and politicians must at last come to an end. Not in another bl bloodbath here or elsewhere, but in the orderly and determined and worldwide suspension of the criminal responsible. Evidence against the bankers and members of the bar associations is now completely overwhelming. 
They have no way to hide from their own criminality and no safe harbor left in the world. It is perhaps ironic and unavoidable that those we have entrusted with the job of dispensing justice have a group become the worst criminals among us, wait, have as a group become the worst criminals among us and that those entrusted with the with global finance have, have, if possible, been more corrupt and inhumane than the members of the Bar Association. We should learn from this history and as we go forward, provide ourselves with more effective mechanisms to disperse power and more efficient checks and balances. But for the immediate task at hand, the following steps are apparent. Force members of Congress to either occupy the public offices they were in good faith elected to serve and to accept their accountability as deputies serving as, as fiscal officers of the continent at the continental states or otherwise admit their allegiance to foreign governments and co corporate interests and release all pretensions of claim interest or authority related to us and the land jurisdiction of the several states. Call for, call for special elections to fill that vacancies caused by lack of allegiance or membership in the Bar Association. Two, oh, that was one. Two, require the members of the actual Congress acting as deputies of the continental states which are and have been at peace for 150 years to formally declare peace throughout the American do dominions. Three, requ three, require the members of the properly seated United States of America in Congress assembled acting as deputies of the continental states to reinstate the Coast Guard as a completely civil maritime detachment under separate command, specifically on charged, specifically charged with responsibility to prevent inland piracy and press ganging on our shores. To similarly reform the office of the provost marshal and to promulgate clear cut rules and specific prohibitions against military operations within the states on the land and the use of federal agency personnel stationed within these states. Fully staff and reoccupy all public courts of the land jurisdiction at the county and state and district levels. Clearly marking and delineating the difference between private and federal United States courts versus public and continental United States courts so that average people can readily and without confusion understand the nature and jurisdiction of the specific courts. If individuals wish to continue in their chosen profession as lawyers, they will have to decide whether to work for the public courts of the continental United States or the private courts of the federal United States, never the twain to meet. All bar associates Asian members must be retrained to thoroughly understand that neither they, they nor their courts have any jurisdiction whatsoever related to American state citizens, nor their private property assets, that their courts are not competent to function under Article 7, that they may not hold any public office serving or related to the continental United States while holding any title bestowed by a foreign government, including a squire. Five, the general populace must be brought up to speed regarding the foreign nature and proper functioning of the federal United States so as to ex expedite mutual respect and understanding of the respective roles and contractual responsibilities due to both the land and the sea jurisdiction. This includes making available, reliable, simple, and complete 
educational courses in history, civics, and, and government as part of the public school curriculum. Six, all state legislators elected to fill offices in the federal state in the federal state of franchises must sim must, similar to members of Congress, choose whether they are acting in behalf of the federal United States or the continental United States, and either take their appropriate oath or depart from any pretension of public office related to the state on the land or for the for example, the California state. It may be appropriate for two state level legislators to convene when acting as deputies of the land counties of the actual state and another acting as a local franchise of the federal United States and its voting districts. But in no case should there be an, an obfuscation or confusion due to the use of similar names used to deceive people about the nature and jurisdiction of these two respective of these two respective state legislators, and so to use mischaracteriz characterization and semantic deceit as a means to defraud the living people of their property, assets, and their due. Seven. The same kind of restructing and separation must take place at the county level, too, with all the same caveats in place and fully observed. It may be legitimate for the federal United States to have clearly defined outposts and service centers and administrative organizations operating within the continental United States, but it is not appropriate for federal franchises and agencies to use similar names that confuse the identity of such federal counties with actual land jurisdiction counties. Eight, commercial corporations must either be totally outlawed or strictly and efficiently policed to ensure compliance with their charters and lawful stated purposes. Commercial corporations have always been of dubious value as they exist to allow the investors, managers, and shareholders to avoid true accountability for their actions. These structures, it has been claimed, promote private investment and in and capitalization of new technology and infrastructure but it can also be claimed that such privileged organizations more often make use of their relative immunity from prosecution to indulge in reckless and moral and even criminal behavior serving to suppress competition, cheat consumers, and poison the environment without bearing full liability for their actions. The system of private insurance, which predates the rise of modern corporate structures by hundreds of years was sufficient protection for investors and shareholders to capitalize modern ind industry throughout the world without recourse to any corporate veil. And it continues to be employed by virtually all incorporated entities. So we are left with the deduction that a corporate charter is little more than a license to lie, cheat, steal, pollute, and commit other crimes, and get away with it. This being the apparent reality and our current experience with governmental services, corporations providing substantial proof, we must ask ourselves what purpose, value, or benefit do commercial corporate structures offer society as a whole? What we not all be better off to force commercial ed commercial ventures to assume full commercial liability for their acts? Lastly, nine. Escaping accountability for one's acts is a hallmark of criminal intent. And from our direct experience with modern commercial corporations, we have seen that 
intent realized, one possible answer would be the would be to make corporations charter in local communities and be held directly accountable to the people of the of the communities. Another answer would be to limit the size of corporate entities so as to avoid monopoly prone markets dominated by multiple multinational conglomerates. Whatever we do and however we go forward, it is important for America and the rest of the world to face up to the problems that commercial co corporations create for human societies and economies when they are not when they are not well regulated. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good. Gonna make a difference. Gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the streets with not enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their needs? A summer disregard, a broken bottle top, and a one man soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know, because they got nowhere to go. That's why I want you to know I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change, yeah. Na 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 na. I've been a victim of a selfish kind of love. It's time that I realize. But there are some with no home, not a nickel to loan. Could it be really me pretending that they're not alone? A willow deeply scarred, somebody's broken heart, and a washed out dream. They follow the pattern of the wind you see, cause they got no place to be. That's why I'm starting with me. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. Final note. Please remember that 99% of the people involved in this kingdom of lies never knew what they were doing or why. Never knew what they were doing anything wrong. Wait, never knew that they were doing anything wrong. Inform them. Hold them accountable for what they do after this information is given to them. And do your best to forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was part 11. Next, next time we will be going over part 12, Jacques, the formal affidavit. Part 12 is the final chapter. I will see you all there.